Okay, so on last week's episode, we spent the first 20 minutes talking about the 80s new wave band Oingo Boingo frontman Danny Elfman, who also is one of the greatest composers of our generation. Mm -hmm. I made a hot take about how I find Danny Elfman extremely attractive, and then we were going through pictures, and it was sort of like, I don't know, but he, we came across on like people are movement hot but not picture hot so there's Uh some people who like you don't really get it with a photo but then you watch them in action and it's like oh my god yeah Hmm. and we also mentioned um philip seymour hoffman who i just think is hot and so we did a poll which i you said danny elfman is extremely hot (laughs) do like 80s danny we're not doing this again (laughs) listen 80s danny everyone has a type twitter in my type is unattractive men who are really talented (laughs) anyway so we did a poll on Twitter. <laughs> That's a great type. <laughs> Unattractive. No, it's awful. <laughs> this is why I have a billion terrible date stories. Okay. Uh, I could see how you might think <laughs> you might think he's attractive. Welcome, no, but I can, I can welcome see Welcome to the podcast, Ethan. Yeah. I'm getting roasted. <laughs> anyway, Twitter said 80s Danny Elfman, just hot. So thanks, mm-hmm. guys, for backing me up. And then we did Philip Seymour Hoffman and overwhelmingly not... <laughs> So when, I guess, you know, hold on. When, when, Phil, this... when Philip Seymour Hoffman, that's the question. Yeah. I would say, I mean, look, this is just one man's opinion, but yeah. that guy doesn't look hot to me. I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I would say never. <laughs> <laughs> but I, a lot of people yeah. disagree with me on this. Uh, I I wouldn't. Okay. And also. Really? No. No, no. I I fuck, wouldn't. Guys? I would say he's a tr- like he's a good looking guy. I wouldn't say that he's but he's hot. not hot. He's not it. hot. So I'm gonna pause this for a second. Yes, I think we need to Pull back you back off that bit. mic a little bit. A little too, uh, a little yeah. too much. You know what? Maybe maybe we'll leave that in because I, I like I like it. I, I like, like it. that mild Patrick Warburton going there. The, oh. What I just did. Yeah, uh, that was not intentional. Well, but thank you. Okay. Anyway, so we're a great start. I'm just getting roasted. Uh, well, no one has a wrong. You can. You, there's no wrong opinion about who's yeah. hot. It's subjective. Right. I'm, just I'm, like I'm, I'm, comedy. I'm probably wrong. Anyway, <laughs> we have a guest on this podcast, which I'm very excited about because uh, for those of you unaware, we do the late night live shows, and for our second one, our guest with e- was e- Ethan Nestor, who's back on the podcast. Was Got that the second one? That was the second live that. show we ever did, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. This uh, is the second yeah. time I've fucked up a guest's in a drug... In, it, fuck. <laughs> it's all right. I'm just going to stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for having me on. Oh, dude, we're so happy you can be here today. And we it also was, have... Uh, we have a sweet boy in the studio. Yes. Who? Spencer. He's uh, here. Ethan, do your fans know about Spencer? They must, oh. right? <laughs> oh, they know about Spencer more than they know about me or care about me. So, um, uh, which I can't fault them for. Which yeah. I means that, uh, uh, as as Layton said earlier, I think we all have to talk about our dogs mm-hmm. now. Yeah, so, excellent. Layton, yeah. present um, your dog's case as best dog in the room. I no, I'm not going to do that because she's inherently a piece of shit freak. Um, <laughs> okay, and I would literally <laughs> automatic last, and I would die for her. Yeah, she's. I don't know. She's just a nightmare. She zooms around. Um, and, and your she, dog's name, for those who don't know, your dog's name is? Maybe. Maybe. And she is? Arrested Development. She's two years old and she's a little chihuahua mini pin with eyebrows. Follow her on Instagram at <laughs> maybe baby, M-A-E-B-Y-B-A-B-I-E. Uh-huh. Um, what is it? What is a mini mini pin? Mini pin Chihuahua mix, apparently with a little Italian Greyhound in there. What's mini pin? That's what I'm asking. M- oh, miniature pincher. Miniature pincher. But uh, last... that's a good band name. Miniature <laughs> pincher. <laughs> but you spell them both like pincher, like P I N C H E R. I do miniature pincher. I do like that a lot. Um, last night I was very high and watching Thirty Rock and eating Girl Scout cookies. As you do. Uh-huh. And I was just like sort of falling asleep and maybe was just, I'm doing a thing with my hands, but she was curled up on my chest with like her head on my shoulder and she was just fast asleep and I was just giving oh. her pets and oh, that's, that's, oh, that's the stuff right there. That is the stuff. Have you tried the new lemon Girl Scout cookies? I have. I, are those new? I feel like I remember them being a thing for a uh, long time. Rachel told me they were new and I don't remember seeing them in the past, but I'm far from an authority on this, but I thought they were fucking awesome. Huh. All of them are good. I mean, it's it's a constant temptation. It's like, well, I got a five dollar bill, and they mm. got Samoas, so I'm supporting my community. I haven't, I haven't had Girl Scout cookies in a long time, a long, <laughs> long time. Big fan of Thin Mints, though, which apparently is a hot take. What have. really? People really? don't like those. Thin Mints are yeah. so good. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I love Thin Mints. Uh, it was on a live stream a little bit ago, and they were like, those are the worst. And Wait, I was like, what, what are you the talking fuck? about? Fuck. Okay, two things. Do you put them in the freezer? 
Yes. Yeah, that okay. and Kit Kats I put in the Big freezer. Big brain. Big brain. Mm-hmm. Freezer, freezer Thin Mints? Uh, I can do either one, but I prefer freezer. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's the best. Also, have you had the Thin Mint cereal? What? No. No. Very, very You know good. what? For me, it takes a specific set of situations for me to like mint flavoring. Yeah. And I think cereal is not among those situations. It surprisingly works because it's more chocolate than mint. Hmm. And it's like the... It's the perfect absorption because they're hard enough that the entire thing doesn't get soggy with milk, but just sort of that outer layer gets a little milky and then you get that good chocolate crunch and then you get to drink like chocolate milk at the end. Is it like cookie crisp kind of? I'm a big cookie crisp hater. A little bit more like the Oreo cereal that they brought back. Okay. Because that shit. Mm -mm -mm. I don't like sweet cereals. I uh, found a new cereal recently. It's called called Honey Buns. Mm, um, and it's really fucking good. Are they just like miniature? Yeah, they're honey like buns. little tiny honey buns. So it's things. like cookie crisp with buns. Yeah, it's so good. Well, it's there, so good. There are like two different categories of cereal for me. There's like actually eat for breakfast cereal, which is like a raisin bran or a honey bunches of oats or mm-hmm. plain Cheerios. Like those are great. But then there's the dessert cereal that is traditionally eaten in the middle of the night in your underwear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. That's that's where the chocolatey kind of overly sweet like Reese's Puffs come in. Yeah, that's definitely where honey buns comes in. At some point you turn old and you stop mm. eating sweet cereals and now mm. I only eat blueberry tinged flax seeds. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's, it's great. It's fun. It's fun being <laughs> that, 44. That triggered my fight or flight response. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a to be fair, there's some granola in there too. Mm-hmm. But, All right. Yeah, it's, it's not fun. I don't like it. I actively don't like it. What happens when you eat like Cocoa Puffs? I just hate it. It's, yeah. I just don't have a sweet tooth. You don't go cuckoo anymore. for Cocoa Puffs? I don't. My body now, it, it's so disappointing. Uh, you know, your body changes, mm-hmm. Ethan, as, as, as you grow. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't, hopefully, I'm not the first person to discuss this. Brian, are this you about with to you. give us a lecture <laughs> on our growing bodies? Yeah. The birds and the bees? Is this the talk? Well, when two people like each other very much, wow. uh, they, so I used to, I used to love, uh, really, really spicy food, mm. and now mm-hmm. I like legitimately can't handle it. Hmm. My body just blows up when I eat just something spicy. It. Completely rejects it, and I love the taste. And then I am in actual hell for forty-eight hours. Yeah, huh. I feel that. I, I love spicy stuff. Only recently, I've started getting really bad acid reflux, and like, ooh, that's pure as hell. You get that spicy climbing up your throat, and you're like, oh, my night's ruined. Cool. It, do- it doesn't get better as you get older hmm. either. Great. I think I saw uh, Anthony Carboni tweet something recently where he was like, almost every conversation with your doctor after 40 is like, yeah, that's how that is now. <laughs> and that is totally true. Wait, is Anthony, is, is he 40? I don't know. Maybe maybe got the age wrong. He's, but... he's got a youthful youthful glow. Also, we should have him on the podcast. We should. He's, he's the best. Now I feel like we're talking shit. I don't know his age, and I don't want to call him 40 if that upsets him, and he's not actually 40. He looks so but young. I... That's why I was incredulously mm. like, is he 40? Because he looks... He looks amazing. Yeah. Okay. He is a guy who's hot. He is. Yeah. I would objectively say Anthony Carboni is hot. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's handsome. an anti-Philip Seymour Hoffman. <laughs> the... How dare you? This is weird now. <laughs> Anthony, please don't listen to this. Turn the podcast off. Uh, we we uh, got off track with the dogs. Yeah, we were talking yeah. about dogs, so and then we went cereal, presented... and then you talking about having a crush on Anthony How Carboni. Did we even I did get not to officially. Cereal. I did not officially call it a crush. I just want to be clear. I'm a happily married man. I just wanted to say that Anthony Carboni is a very attractive man, and we all make exceptions. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, Talk about your dog, please. Yeah, Spencer, uh, the light of my life. Um, he's he's just perfect in every way. He's so positive all the time. He's always got in the morning when I take him out for the first walk in the morning. He gets so much pep in his step, and it's so cute. He gets so he excited. Heard his name about and came it. over. How's it going, bud? He's got real big ears. Uh, and in the morning when I go and take him out, he he goes in front of me, but he puts his ears like backwards Mm -hmm. so he can still hear where i am that's awesome it's uh it's really cute um my roommate can tell if i'm home or not by the look on his face uh which is really yeah which is hilarious and so sad at the same time so you can just look at the dog and see if the dog's happy or not yeah 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 yeah. and she's like oh he's got the sad face ethan's not home that is amazing yeah okay so that sounds that's a pretty strong candidate for a dog yeah right there He's he's a good boy uh, my dog is Coco. Mm-hmm. Coco is a, uh, we don't really know, but probably some form of pit bull. Um, but mm-hmm. she's, a, she's a rescue. I say that not to brag, 
but it is a statement of fact that demonstrates mm-hmm. what a good guy I am. You are very, Thank very you. Well, please, very I'm good. not fishing for compliments. You're, you're going to go to heaven. That. Yeah. Along with all dogs. Yeah. <laughs> um, Coco is, we think, about 10 years old mm-hmm. and is uh, is medically stupid. She oh. is one of the dumbest <laughs> creatures I've ever encountered. Uh, she is poorly trained. Clearly, she went through, so we got her about three years ago. Mm-hmm. Clearly, she'd been through a lot of shit yeah. before she, she came to us. Uh, she seems like she was overbred. I know, Ethan, you've seen her nipples. I have. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to describe them to... They are long. <laughs> they are very long. They're, they're, they're danglers. Yeah, yeah, they dangle. They they have stuff hanging off them. Yeah, they swing to and fro. Yep. Um, they're very. They're a prominent feature. Yes, they are. They as she body. walks, they nearly touch the ground. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I so all this to say, the dog went through a lot of stuff mm-hmm. before we got her, and clearly had some form of dog PTSD or whatever you call it, clearly had some some issues that uh, she's been working through. Audrey likes Coco because it's another living thing to touch and prod and mm-hmm. talk at and do little musical performances for. Yeah. So Has Audrey been more of a problem for Coco then? Like, have you had to be like, Audrey, you can't just constantly be poking the dog? Oh, yes. Yeah. Like all the time. Stop touching her eye is something I said the <laughs> other day. Uh, and of course, Coco being a total sweetheart, just sat there and took mm-hmm. it. Like literally just laid on the couch and, and let Audrey prod her face. <laughs> but uh, it, yeah. So Spencer's the best dog. He's a, he's a great yeah, he's a great little guy. I, I agree. I think the ranking seems like it goes Spencer, Coco, maybe. Yes. Okay, great. Yeah. I endorse this. Whatever. Right. We should post pictures. On the Instagram. Oh, Wonderful. we should do that. I love his tiny little smile that he's oh got right gosh. now. Oh my gosh. When dogs <laughs> smile, I mean, maybe he has the eyebrows, so she's mm-hmm. very expressive. He's got, he's got the little, a little bit of eyebrow. Yeah, because mm-hmm. it's like when they narrow and they're pissed, yeah. it, it just looks like a cartoon dog. Oh, oh, Spencer is smiling. Licks. <laughs> yeah, he's a big, he's a big lick guy. The uh, best trick that we Jesus ever taught Christ. him was how to kiss on command, for oh. the most part. Sometimes he gets a little fed up with it. Mm-hmm. Can I take a hard sniffle break real quick so we can cut this oh, out? For sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to an ENT tomorrow. I just, I don't want to have a nose anymore. I want to be like Voldemort. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why didn't, okay. So I have never read the Harry Potter books. Mm-hmm. And there's a reason. I've seen all the movies, but I'm waiting to read them with Audrey. Mm-hmm. Oh. So I'm literally waiting probably another two years. She's five and a half now, almost That's six. Cute. So probably when she turns eight or so, I'll read them with her. Mm-hmm. Why doesn't Voldemort have a nose? Is there an answer to this? It was just the way that he was like reincarnated, I think. He's I can't evil. Remember. I don't know. Okay. It's not really. It's not specified in the books. I, I don't think so. I don't remember. They just wanted to make um, Ray Fiennes look fucked up, I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they just wanted to make him look more snake-like. Oh, that's a good point. Um, it, it does. Right. It's just so uncanny valley and not even in a mm-hmm. creepy way. It's just like mildly comical. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's exciting that you're going to read them to her. My dad, we would re- he would read me a chapter uh, every night. Of and, Harry Potter? Yeah, and uh, oh, so we, went, we went through like the whole series. Even though I had read them already, it was his first time reading them, so it was sort yeah. of like the reverse of that. But we ended up giving, you know, he would do voices for everybody. And then when we got to like the Voldemort parts, he couldn't like come up with a good scary voice. So <laughs> like Voldemort would just like, he would talk like this all the time. <laughs> and <laughs> It was great. It was just like very high pitched. Does your dad have a southern accent? No, he does not. Um, but he's like very good at voices and stuff. Like he wanted to be a voice actor for a while, so it was it was fun. Audrey but... won't let us do voices when we really? read her stuff. She hates it. And wow. Rachel is Weird. a very talented voice actor, and Audrey just every time, especially me, maybe only me. <laughs> now that I think about it, Rip. but uh, no, I, I've seen her do it with Rachel too. Anything that's other than just normal reading mm-hmm. voice. No, no, no voices. I don't like it. Weird. Yeah, right? Because most Tough kids crack. like the voices. Most kids like it. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. I don't know. Very so uh, we do have a topic mm-hmm. today, Ethan. Mm-hmm. The topic is roommates. The topic is roommates. So we, uh, there was a hard segue into this next bit. Mm-hmm. But and they were roommates. And they what? were roommates. 
What is that from? It's a good old vine. Yeah. Oh, I see. Youth from culture. Back, from back in the day. Yeah. I keep saying 2020 is going to be the best year ever for vines. Coming, <laughs> coming back strong. I mean, it is, though. Like, TikTok is really blowing up, and it mm-hmm. frightens me. I don't understand the culture of TikTok, and I'm trying so hard. you don't understand it terrifies me. I, I feel like I'm already past the zone. Like, I mentally feel How? 40 despite being 22 and like i watch these teenagers on tiktok and it's a level of like i thought i was younger than you i'm not really yeah i'm 23 as far as i'm concerned you are both exactly the same age (laughs) yeah it all flattens out under 30 everybody on the age of (laughs) under the age of 30 is a child yes yeah um sorry but Uh, but the levels of humor like it fascinates me because it it's just so it's like anti-comedy, but not in the sense that we've been like thinking about that for a while. Like it's it's so elevated and teenagers are so funny and they didn't have to go through the phases where they wore terrible blue eyeshadow because they can just watch a dude on YouTube show them how to do it. And it's like, you gotta do your time. You gotta wear the shitty Bermuda shorts, you gotta wear your rainbow sandals and look like an idiot. Like do your dues. <laughs> so do you think uh, Vine comedy and – let me well, let me phrase this as a question. How are Vine comedy and TikTok comedy different? Broad brush strokes. TikTok comedy is considerably more surreal and almost like neo-Dada comedy. <laughs> like it baffles me. Um, and then there's also like a certain level of like the stuff that is unself-aware and I guess quote-unquote cringy um, – I don't. I truly don't know how to explain it without like showing you stuff, which is the least yeah. interesting thing I could possibly do. But you you notice a distinct difference between. I mean, it feels generational at this point. Yes. Right. Vine generation people and TikTok people. Well, because Vine is mm-hmm. so economical in the sense that it's seven seconds, and you have to get the most out of that seven seconds as possible. It's like very minimal editing usually. Right. Whereas with TikTok, they're like heavily edited it's usually you know because it functions around you get audio from another source and then you can rip riff on it obviously you can do your own but like it's a lot of you dancing can do up to like two minutes I think, yeah too. they can be really oh long really two and minutes. very wow. dense and they have like a lot of editing features within the app of like all these effects and sort of the floating text that's kind of been such a hallmark of it mm-hmm. um yeah i mean it, it just totally goes to show that like the affordances of a platform shapes the content so much much in the same way that with twitter like the quote retweet is a built-in well, actually, which makes it insufferable. Yeah. <laughs> also, I guess the kind of person who loves using Twitter is somebody I inherently distrust, and I include myself in this. Yeah, I, I well, I, you know, like many people, I like old Twitter when it was weird jokes. Yeah. And current, like, politics Twitter is the absolute worst. Uh, and, well, yeah. the, the hot twi- take Twitter cycle where it's, like, people who – their bread and butter is being quote unquote sassy on Twitter and dunking on people. Like mm. it's so dumb. Fuck that. Yeah. Yeah. Out of context dunking is it's hell on earth. It just, it, it, it makes no, me so nobody angry. Nobody fucking asked. And you're not, I truly do not trust that those people are doing it in good faith. I think they're doing it for clout, which is obnoxious to co-opt important terms to own people mm-hmm. in a way that is not productive and shut down discussion. I don't know, whatever. Uh, the, we're we're, we're <laughs> venturing into yeah. dangerous so territory. <laughs> so, but I, I am curious. Do you have a TikTok account, Layden? I do. Ethan, do you have a TikTok? Uh, I mean, I do. I don't go on it. Yeah, same. I like, I made one. one because I just wanted to have one. But I, I look at the timeline and I'm like, this is so... I don't understand this and I'm frightened. Yeah. yeah. I, I, this is going to come as a shock to you. I do not have a TikTok. Really? I know. I thought about mm. making one for NSP, and I was like, I don't need more social media to yeah. do. Yeah. Because I'm, st- like, I'm still doing all the NSP social media, and I just I don't have the bandwidth to do another one. I was yeah. out getting drinks with my friend Tim last night, and he was talking about how uh, in the next like year or so, he's planning on maybe getting a house. And he was like, yeah, I really want to have like a big housewarming party or something and have everybody... Uh, like turn in their phones at the beginning of the party. Mm. What a <laughs> and great idea! And I was like, idea. "Wow, that sounds wonderful." Yes. And he's like, "Yeah, I know that not everybody would be down, but I just like want people to come over and just like have a good time, and want nobody to be on their phone and just like have to interact." Well, that's when you t- like bring disposable cameras back yeah. and just like kind of pass those around. Like, I I love the concept. I don't force anybody to do this, but the idea of a phone stack when you're hanging mm-hmm. out where everybody stacks their phones on top of each other and then they just don't touch them. Yeah. I just, I hate the constant availability that it implies. And I've started doing a thing. I was doing really well with this a couple of months ago where I would turn my phone off for three hours every night. It's a great idea. And then I fell out of it and I've started doing it again because I would find myself coming home and then getting into the loop of like, check Instagram, check Twitter, check check 
Reddit, check Pinterest, and then do it all again and just, Mm -hmm. like, listlessly sit there feeling miserable. Yeah. And the moment I catch myself doing it, now I turn it off and, like, I play more video games. I read more. I watch more stuff and I'm more, like, present for it. And it's scary once you realize, like, when it's off – how many times you reach for your phone just oh, yeah. instinctively. Yeah. Have you seen the the people that make like the, the, just the, the rubber black rectangle? Yeah. So you just put it in your pocket <laughs> and feel like you have a phone, but it's not actually there. I it's hate that. so sad. I know that that's kind of for a joke, but it's kind of not. But bring it's kind of not. back flip phones. Bring Ooh. back slidey can still, keys. Can you still get flip phones if you want them? Yeah, I mean, if you want to get a burner Walmart phone and... Um, I want a sidekick. I Me too. This is totally my thing. This slidey thing. I've been yeah. buying them on eBay because you can get one for like $5. Really? Just, just wow. for the weight of it. And I got a pink razor because when I was a kid, like... Hell yeah. Oh, anybody with ultimate. a razor was I the... remember you know, that. With yep. a Justin Timberlake ringtone that you paid $2 for. <laughs> yep. Yep, yep, yep. So, roommates. 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 Uh, Ethan, have you... Do you? Have you had I a roommate? I currently have a roommate and I have had one roommate before... My current roommate. Mm-hmm. Yes. And were they good situations? You obviously don't comment on your current one if you feel like... Well, yeah, for the like, most part. Uh, I mean, there there have been some like, uh, it, you know, with everything, ups and downs. Yeah. Um, and like learning how to live. Uh, because uh, before my first roommate, uh, I was just living at home. Um, and that's usually how it goes. Yes. Um, usually most people start that way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so learning how to live with somebody else that's not your family is really weird because it's just like, Oh, we don't do things the same way. Ah. Um, Oh, Spencer, that's not for you. Nope. That's not a Spencer found a non dog toy. That is not a dog toy. Spencer. It is a little xenomorph. (laughs) Oh, it's so (laughs) cute. cute. Yeah. Audrey loves it. Oh, I keep sorry. it in my porcelain D20. <laughs> the taste. Spencer, that's not a toy for you. Sorry, bud. Um, yeah, no, but it's 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 weird learning how to live with somebody that you didn't grow up with and just like, oh, shit, we do things a little different. It's um, in, in I read through every email that we got and the universality of the roommate issues mm-hmm. are like you could have a bingo card and hit yeah. all of them because it's always different standards of cleanliness, different standards of chore division somebody having their boyfriend over five nights a week and that person not paying rent, yeah, right. which I've experienced. Yeah, um, yeah it's... Oh. Well, it's just hard living, you know, when you live with someone who's a romantic partner, mm-hmm. you feel like you have some measure of, you're kind of in it together in a way. Mm-hmm. You're really on the same team. Yeah. Roommates do not have to be on the same team. Yeah. And y- y- you are, it's very easy to find yourself uh, in opposition to someone and then you have to sleep, you know, five feet away from them every night with mm-hmm. only a thin wall separating you. Yeah. Or, or just in the same room. When I was at SCAD, I had a dorm room that was probably the size of this garage uh, it was me, two other roommates. We each had a twin, you know, sort of lofted bed in each corner. But then one of the roommates had a boyfriend who just started living with us. So it was four people in this room with the smallest bathroom with a oh broken toilet. It, you know, God bless my roommates. I'm mildly worried they'll listen to this. So I don't want to talk too much shit. <laughs> but oh my God, it was the worst. Yeah. Um, very bad. One of them would leave used period pads covered in blood oh. out in the bathroom just like on the side of the tub on the top of the trash can unwrapped welcome yeah. to hell that, oh that's so really bad so if, if i just that this is a preface of like roommate situations i've been there yeah i, I had a bunch you know college had an actual roommate for a couple years mm-hmm. and then it was just like apartment or dorm mates mm-hmm. uh after that and i really kind of lucked out i had no bad situation i guess one was my first year of grad school at uc san diego i was in a a suite with four other guys and yes there it was it actually the big thing there was very stanky cooking one guy just loved to make very very (laughs) fragrant Uh. and oil splattery things oh, God. and the entire kitchen was coated with a thin film of grease all the time and the apartment smelled terrible but that was i mean like I had a girlfriend, I was more or less staying with most of the time anyway, and it really was not a not a huge issue. Oh, big big difference between four dudes living together and four women living together because not to say like definitely in my situation where I was living with women like very bad, but also I've been in enough like 
dude college houses oh. where it's like, here's the wall where we hang up the cardboard boxes from the beer that we're drinking. Also, we have no <laughs> like organizers in the kitchen drawers. So it's just like loose chopsticks and dirty silverware and like condoms for some reason. And then they have like a gravity bong that they made out of a vodka bottle sitting in the sink. And the, the just like pubes everywhere in the bathroom and globs of toothpaste. I'm having like flashbacks See, right now. But but there's something there's a big difference between what you're talking about, which is college dudes, yes. and what I'm talking about, which was grad school dudes. Because Ooh. grad school self selects the least sociable and hygienic people. <laughs> so, Wonderful. But also they're not jockey, mm. right? Typically speaking, so it's real gross, but not in a, a jockey way. There's also sure. generally there's no effort put into decoration. Yeah whatsoever Mm -hmm. because especially if you're still at the stage where you're living in a dorm in grad school you're probably first or second year or something like that Mm -hmm. and you're just all in for working all the time and yeah it it gets gross it's funny that you say uh that about just like frat dudes because that's totally true but also two great friends of mine who are women that live together had the exact same apartment (laughs) where exactly (laughs) what you just described and i was just like ah yeah yeah, um, it's like if you're gonna yeah. shave your face or shave your pubes, c- clean the fuck up. Yeah, come on, be an adult. It's not that hard. I think that's one of the hardest things about having a roommate is different standards of cleanliness. Yes, for sure. Because um, that's something that that me and my roommate have a have a hard time with, and we've been balancing out recently, which is great. Um, but I have a much higher standard of cleanliness than she does. Are you a very um, neat and orderly person? I'm not a very neat because I have, I have like stages where like right now, like my office is a fucking mess, but I get super stressed out about it. Um, and I'll have just like days where I just like fucking like crazy clean. Um, my dad is like probably the cleanest person I've ever met really? in my life. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he doesn't ever have dishes in his sink, ever. What? <laughs> what ever? the fuck? <laughs> yeah, he vacuums, like, almost every day. What? Um, he's, His house is just immaculate. This is all the time. Vacuums every day. It's so... I don't know why. Um, it makes him happy. Um, but yeah, no, there's never any dishes in his, in his sink ever. Like he does all the dishes. Like as soon as he's done eating, he does all the dishes or like puts them in the dishwasher or whatever. Wow. He's very, very clean. Um, yeah. So we just have, have different standards for cleanliness. Um, and he didn't, did he, when you were a kid, did he make you do mm -hmm. live to that standard? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I remember because my job was to clean the bathroom. Um, and he was, he was a real stickler about the bathroom because I would never clean the toilet right Uh until I learned how to clean the toilet right. Um, Well, okay. How do you clean a toilet right? So, (laughs) so because I feel like I'm putting music behind this. I feel like I want want a very precise description of how to clean a toilet correctly. All right. Hello, everybody. Do you want to know how to clean a toilet? Let me tell you how to clean a toilet. When you think of a toilet, you think of the bowl. And that's the dirtiest part because that's where the the yucky, yucky stuff goes. So not only do you have to clean the bowl, but you have to clean the lid. You have to clean every single surface of the toilet, even in the weird pipe part under underneath the toilet, you know, on the sides. Mm-hmm. You got to clean that all down. You got to get all the scum off of it. You got to clean the little flushy handle thing. You got to clean the top thing. Uh, even sometimes you got to lift the lid off and just give a good wipe on the inside of the upper part. What is that wow. part of the toilet the, called? The lid? Yeah, oh, like no, oh, where the, the water bowl, is. The bowl. Wow. The tank. The tank, the yeah. Tank. Yes. Um, yeah, no, I would have to have to clean that toilet. And you got to get in there with the bleach, but also not mm-hmm. gas yourself. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it, there are also, there's some chemicals, of course, if you mix them with bleach, you mm-hmm. can cause some real bad shit. Oh, yeah, that's what I mean. Don't mm-hmm. gas yourself. <laughs> My yeah. bathroom oh, is yes. like when I have tall friends over like commander me out she was a big boy like their knees will touch touch my sink and Mm -hmm. they're like i hate this i don't want to be in here so like cleaning with any sort of chemical and i don't really have a window so it's just like okay i'd love to not die yeah i uh i did a lot of grout cleaning oh wow yeah that was part of the like toothbrush style yeah it was like a it was like a a metal toothbrush like metal wire brush. That sounds no, like a normal toothbrush to me. The, clean the grout. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Uh, Should we um, actually answer questions? Would yeah. you hand me that stack of emails? I guess. Uh, we got a lot of good ones. Yeah. So um, we actually printed them out um, old school. So it's it's very nostalgic to hold a printout of an email. Yes. So this, did, did I tell you about the, the house we filmed in for NSP once? That no. Had, 
<laughs> one of the greatest things I've ever seen. Uh, it was some older people that lived there, and they had a printout on their coffee table of a USA Today article ranking every Game of Thrones episode. <laughs> <laughs> I love And it was that. like 50 pages printed out. That's, That's magical. Great. And it was awesome. Anyway, sorry. I love that. So first email, this is from Rain. About roommates, mine eternally smells like ass and also uses a new cup every time he gets a new drink and it drives me nuts. Like, dude, just rinse out your old one. Parentheses. Also, please shower. I really wish he would shower. He leaves shit stains on the toilet every time and he every time he uses it. This is not a joke. I wipe up my period blood. Why can't he wipe his shit? Also, the cup thing is very annoying. I hate how the sink is always half full of cups because I really hate doing the dishes. Parentheses, how do I get him to take a shower? <laughs> I've tried spaying, spraying him with Febreze, but he just gets angry, but he really does smell. Parentheses, I mean, at least he doesn't leave his room often, so I don't really have to smell him often. Parentheses, again, also sorry for any bad formatting. I don't email people often, LOL. Have a nice day. <laughs> okay, so there's there's a couple issues here. It seems that they're the two ones that... Uh, what are the pronouns? What are this person's pronouns? She, her. She, her. Uh, there are two things that uh, she's complaining about here. One is the cups and mm-hmm. one is the stank. And <laughs> yeah, I think I can rank those in terms of how brutal they, they seem. <laughs> yeah. The cups, like to me, it's kind of like, what are you going to do about it? I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, the thing that sucks is doing someone else's dishes. Yes. Uh, doing it once in a while is okay. But if you're, if you're in that situation constantly, mm-hmm. that's what's really lame. And what I can't tell from this is if this guy is just using cups and then not washing them. Does that mm-hmm. sound like what's going on here? Yeah, especially because Rain refers to I really hate doing the dishes um, and how the sink is always half full of cups. So I'm assuming yeah. he's not doing them, which it's like washing a water cup is the easiest dish yeah. you can do. It's very exciting because you're just like oh, a quick swipe and we're good. But it, you run into that thing with roommates, especially if they're not doing dishes where like you need to use the thing. Mm-hmm. And so your hand is forced into doing their dishes. That's like, exactly yeah. right. This guy can't be yeah. like the kid from Signs just leaving, getting new cups every time. <laughs> like, come on. It's the second time in four episodes we've talked about Signs. It's, I, uh... it's an integral part of my personality. I'm sorry. Here's a strategy I just thought of for the yeah. cops. Get rid of every cup but two. <laughs> okay. So you only have two cups two in cups. the house. Yep. And then one is yours. You keep it with you. Mm-hmm. So I'm telling this keep it to, on your to person. Rain. Keep it on your person at all time. Mm-hmm. And the other is your roommates. Mm-hmm. And so when he needs to use a cup, he has one choice mm-hmm. and he's got to figure it out. He's going to use yeah. both of them though, guaranteed. Yeah. I think maybe introducing like paper cups or plastic cups or you use your own water bottles. Actually, you buy your own cups, you keep them in, in your room. He's not allowed to use them you bring them out when you want to use them. So then you don't have to worry about cleaning his, like, fuck them. I, I think a big thing that happens a lot with roommates is the person is messy and you are forced to clean it. So there's mm-hmm. no incentive for them to clean it because they know that if they wait long enough, that's you'll a, do it for them. So it's like exactly that, right. that learned helplessness. I also call this marriage. Mm. Yes. If there's a way that you can get a cup that dissolves after you use it. I mean, like, if, if it was plastic cups or paper cups, I think that would be... Mm-hmm. And then, you know what's going to happen? That's going to turn into he will not take out the trash. Yeah, uh, totally. Every yes. time. Yes. Uh, if you want to be even more passive-aggressive, what you can do uh, is if <laughs> if there's a bunch of dishes in the sink that's theirs, you can take those dishes and just put them in front of their door. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I I've also seen, do that. <laughs> I've heard of many people who will just, after a certain period of time, will put them on the roommate's bed. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Amazing. Yeah. But we're, we're leaving the elephant in the room alone here, which is mm, the smell. The, the smell. This yeah. is a hard thing. Uh, I mean, everybody... Everybody has their own smell, mm-hmm. right? And part of being a human is dealing with other people's smells. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I'm going to assume that this is just legitimately a bad smell yeah. and not someone who just smells a way you don't like. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's probably because, a because BO issue. Multiple yeah. time mentions, how do I get him to take a shower? Yes. Okay, that's a problem. Yeah. And also the not wiping up his shit. So a thing yeah, that I, I feel like I hear about a lot is men not wiping their ass thoroughly, and that is a cause. It, yeah, yeah, both of them are making faces. It's very bad. I've never had this issue. I, nor have I. <laughs> yes, I, I am wiping your ass very thorough. Yeah. Very I'm easy. Proud to admit it. Yeah, yeah, possibly like a little too thorough. But it's. It, 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 I've heard dudes do the like, oh, it's like getting peanut butter out of a shag carpet. And it's like, well, then fucking deal with it. You know, you know <laughs> shave what? your asshole. I can't. Ah! 
First of all, no. <laughs> no one has that much ass hair. <laughs> exactly. It's like, oh, so you're just going to leave shit on your ass? No. But you know what? I will say, uh, we have like a little bidet thing that mm-hmm. we installed in. How is it? It wasn't a Japanese toilet. It. So have I. It's just a little yeah. like, uh, so they, yeah, they have the full like cool Japanese toilets, which I would really love. But we got this thing. I won't say the brand because until they pay us to. Uh, Wait, yeah. Can, can we get a bidet sponsor? I would, I would love, love that. That yeah. would be so good. Wash your asshole like Brian Wecht. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, so we put it on the toilet. It was real easy to hook up. I do yeah. not hook things up well. This took me 10 minutes to do it, and it is fucking awesome. $30 on Amazon. Yep. I, I'm, I'm like about to pull the trigger on it. Do like, it. It sure. is It is great. You and know what? You know I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to order yeah. a bidet right now. Do, do it. it. That sounds... Ones, he's can, got his phone out. He's that going. That sounds wonderful. Oh, this is the, the first on-podcast bidet ordering ever. I right. do love that. So, you know, with the high, also baby wipes are great, not just for your ass. I mean, they're, you, you get into yeah. the like throwing them away and flushing them, which is an issue. So like, yes. you know, if you're conscious about the environment or whatever, but also if he's not going to shower, you can do the depression thing of you hit that dry shampoo, you hit that baby wipe all over, mm-hmm. you hit that deodorant. And ultimately, like it, it, it's a hard answer to hear. You can't force another human being to no. shower when yeah. it really gets down to it. Mm-hmm. You can't do it. It, it, it. It's it's not great. And, it, you know, if it's bad enough, then unfortunately, you know, you have to have a you have to have a hard conversation with this guy. Mm-hmm. I'm guessing he doesn't have a partner from yeah. what I'm hearing here. Yeah. Uh, but it, it sounds like you've told him he stinks. Right. That's my Does inference. Does it, though? Because... I don't see any indication that this person has told him that he stinks. Okay. Well, that's the first thing I would do, and that's a tough, tough it conversation. It is a tough conversation. I've had to have that conversation before so uh, in a different way because I could tell them because it was when I was working at a restaurant. I was the manager, mm-hmm. and so I had gotten, like, boss. Yeah, so I'd gotten, like, complaints about this person <gasps> smelling. So I was like, hey, like, you need to, like bathe more and or bring deodorant or something because we've been getting a lot of complaints about your stench. And did they do it? Yeah, yeah. Um, because we had to have a, a happy medium there because it was we also had a, a rule at the restaurant about like no perfumes or colognes or anything. Mm-hmm. So basically you should just not really have bring any in a kind scent. of overwhelming smell, whether it's bad or good. Um, but yeah, no, it was super awkward though to be like, hey, you smell bad. Uh, please but work on that. Especially if you come at it from a gentle angle, because honestly, from what you're describing, and I feel like most times that this happens, it's either complete ignorance or like a certain level of depression of just like mm-hmm. not really mm-hmm. caring about your body yeah. being like that. But if you come at it like you know, I, this is not going to be a comfortable conversation to have, but I need to bring it up because it's affecting me. I'm a little bit concerned about you because I noticed that you do not really shower and I can smell that. And you know, if you could like, what's going on with you (laughs) instead of an accusatory, like you need to do this and this and this Mm -hmm. just like gentle suggesting. And then if it doesn't change from there, that's when you have the harder, like, look, man, I can't Mm -hmm. put up with this. This is a scenario where I statements are really good. Yes, that's right. This this is going to be the recommendation every time. When you, when you do this, I feel like it fucking smells. <laughs> yes. So it, it sounds like a, I mean, uh, I think with all these roommate situations, we have to assume that uh, moving is out of the question, at mm-hmm. least yeah. short term. I mean, that's the, the thing about a roommate is that is always a last recourse. Yeah. yeah. Although sometimes it isn't for a million different reasons, cost, location, mm-hmm. whatever the fuck it is. Right. Yeah. But, uh, you know, w- with all these things, if you really can't stand it, then you, you can try to move if that's something that's mm-hmm. possible. For yeah. you. It sucks. Mm-hmm. And it really sucks if you feel like you've been wronged and you're the one who has to go through the inconvenience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But sometimes that is really the only way to stay sane. Yeah. It is though, like you gotta remember that like living with somebody else, no matter if it's like a romantic partner or if it's just a roommate, like you gotta have a compromise there. That's right. Um and like me and my roommate did that recently. Uh and it was really great. And I was like, hey, like I know that like I've noticed that I do a lot of the cleaning. And so we made like a chore list that mm. we do. So it's like on these days, like I take out the trash on this day, she vacuums or whatever. So it's all about just like finding a compromise. So if you can do that with your roommate and being like, hey, maybe I do the dishes on Wednesday and you do them on Friday or whatever. 
Yeah, the, there are actually like chore tracking apps that you can get multiple people on the same thing and it'll oh, give you reminders and stuff. I don't, I'm sure if you just look up chore tracking, you can find it. Uh, the number one thing, uh, a friend told me this and I really believe it. I don't know if there's, there's any statistics, but it's plausible. The number one thing that kills relationships is resentment. Mm. Yep. And yeah. if you feel yourself getting resentful, which I think it's pretty fair to say this person does, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you got to deal with that right away because you're not going to get less resentful mm-hmm. as yeah. it goes on. Ignoring a feeling has never, ever made it go away. Yeah. You got to deal with it. There we go. Okay. So this is from Ferret, top line. <laughs> Roommates keep moving my damn rock. <laughs> hey, guys. So I live with two roommates and we get along pretty well. I genuinely enjoy their company and we hang out a lot. I realize I'm reading this with a tone that makes this person sound like an (laughs) utter tool, but that's how I read things. A stupid thing that's been bothering me is that they keep moving my cooking rock, even when I've explained I use it almost every day I'm home, and that it's fine where it is. My job takes me away for most of the week, and I come back almost every time, and they've moved it. Do I have to explain a cooking rock? Okay. Yes. Yes, Yes. absolutely. (laughs) What's a cooking rock? I would have assumed pizza stone. Okay, you know, let's let's pull the room. When you hear cooking rock, what do you think? Uh, I already read this email, so I know. <laughs> well, what did you think when you first saw cooking? I, I also assumed like a pizza stone. Yeah. Yeah, sounds like a, a pizza stone. Kind okay, of like. so we're all, we're three out of three on pizza stone. Here's what a cooking rock is. It's a big old river rock you used to smash slash tenderize slash cook with. It's useful. And this one is pretty because my grandma carved a picture on it for me, so it's extra cool. Hey. I love this idea. What a great idea. Ferret, <laughs> ferret. <laughs> Send us a picture of your cooking rock. Yes, please tag us uh, at Leighton underscore night on Instagram. I or, want to see your or, or email it. And if you yeah. give us permission, we would love to post it on That's our a Instagram. better way. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. Uh, email it to LeightonKnight at gmail.com and we'll post it. Uh, I love this idea. It's a big river rock used to hit things. Uh, but my roommates move it to the other side of the kitchen and use it as a paperweight. <laughs> and it pisses me off. <laughs> Basically, what advice do you have to fix this? I just really want the rock to stay where it is. I I hate having to look for it. Also, please tell me if you have ever heard of cooking rocks. Is this a native thing? Ooh, so maybe huh. it is a native thing. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I love that idea, though. It's like that's fascinating because I have a, 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 a like a meat tenderizer mallet, uh-huh. mm-hmm. but to have I feel like a, a giant rock would be so much also, better. Also, you for would it. feel so <sighs> cool. You pull yeah. a Bong Joon Ho's parasite on some chicken. Uh-huh. I'm it's really tenderized. curious what part of the world, uh, or probably the U.S. I would assume mm-hmm. that this person lives in. Maybe it's a regional thing. I don't hmm. know. Maybe, yeah, because I've never heard of a cooking rock. All right, I I, got to do the deep dive on cooking rocks. But I think, you know, the the meat of the issue is the the roommates keep moving it and using it as a paperweight. I think Mm -hmm. um, for a lot of things that go missing, like a remote or where you put your phone or your keys, everything needs a home. Mm -hmm. And if you have a designated place that you're like, look, guys, I, I will buy you a paperweight if you need a paperweight, but this is where my cooking rock goes and it bothers me when you move it. If you can return it to here and whatever else you need to do your stuff, just like don't use it. It, I use it to cook. That's exactly what I I was going to say. And I will go one further. And I would say make a little bed for it. Mm. Like make a little rock home yeah, for this Tuck it thing. in at night. Tuck it in at night. Mm-hmm. Sw- sing sweetly to it, right? Yeah. Right. Engrave. Get a little plate for this rock's home. And then the rock can live there and it can become like a fun tradition mm-hmm. yeah. for you and your roommate. This is where the rock, especially since that. it's a lovely family heirloom yeah. that your grandma made for you. Yeah. That's amazing. So really make it a whole thing. This is where the rock lives. Yeah. This is now part of our tradition as an apartment or wherever house, wherever you live. Uh, and it can be a, a fun, cool tradition. Or you can mm-hmm. even change it week to week. This, you know, I'm going to decorate the Rock's bedroom this week. <laughs> I think I, that could be really fun. I fucking love this. What I a perfect that. solution. Honestly, bookend on this. Send us a picture of the Rock. Make t- Tuck that Rock in. All right. So the subject line is mystery toilet. Uh, hello, Leighton, Brian, and possible guest. Oh, That's me. Oh, wow. You. I've been living with a new roomie for about two months. She leaves about a half an hour before me in the morning, and every day when I go to the bathroom to wash up, the lid is down and she's not flushed the toilet. This grosses me out, and I have no idea why this is happening. I thought maybe because we live in a very small apartment with thin walls, she gets up in the night, does her business, and then does not flush for quiet's sake. But I definitely get up during the the night and will flush. Uh, A-I-T-A? Am I, Am the, I asshole? the asshole? Oh, yep. Yeah. Um, 
Maybe she goes before she takes a shower and doesn't want to mess up the water temperature. Maybe she's just nasty. I don't know how to confront her about this. It's awkward to be like, hey, uh, do you not know how to flush a toilet? <laughs> how do you tell someone who's still pretty much a stranger uh, to you that their bathroom habits are gross? I really don't want to start putting post-it notes up on the bathroom mirror, but I'm getting to that point. Any help is really appreciated. Truly disgusted, B. Do not do the passive aggressive note thing. No, it's especially so with lame. Yeah. months. Um, if this was like if this been been happening for a year and you talked about it, do the note thing. But um, yes. So big question here that is the mystery: is it number one or is it number two? Yes, that's yes. exactly right. Because uh, we had a saying back home. I don't know if you guys oh, yeah. ever had yeah. a saying: if it's yellow, let it mellow. If, if it's, it's brown, brown, gulp it, it down. down. Gulp it down. <laughs> what? <laughs> Different saying, but yeah, same 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 concept. Thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, so if it's just pee, uh, I mean, I feel like, because maybe they think, oh, I won't flush it because it's just pee, but I feel like if you're doing it with a strength, because, like, at home with your family, then yeah. I feel like it's or fine. Or if you but, live alone. Yeah. But, yeah. And some people do, actually, I was just on a, a trip this week with some friends, mm -hmm. and they, for purely environmental and water reason, do the yellow, mellow, brown down thing. Mm -hmm. And oh, that's a good album title, Yellow Mellow Brown Down. Uh, uh, but yeah, it, it, in, in their case, it is a very conscious choice to save water. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think it's totally defensible. It's a little gross because mm -hmm. P is P, but kind of makes sense. So yeah. yes, number one or number two is a huge, huge issue. Because really. if it's number two, fuck that. You should never have to see another person's shit. Yeah, <laughs> totally yeah, right. But if it's, really if it's just pee, I mean, that's just like have the conversation of like, hey, I don't know like what the deal is in your family. If it's like, do you do this to conserve water or whatever? It, it, this is kind of new to me. So if we could find a compromise, that would be great. I don't mind if you flush in the middle of the night because if, if the flushing is really loud, I could see mm -hmm. that. But, you know, just like figure out what the reasons are. If yeah. it is shit, different story also yeah. water temperature is not a valid excuse in no, this it's case not. whatsoever yeah. you flush it wait 30 seconds you're fine yeah like you're not flushing you're not reaching out of the shower while you're taking a shower mm -hmm. to flush it i don't buy the water temperature no i have a question excuse. for you guys yes even peeing in the shower acceptable not acceptable acceptable okay. living alone yes Actually, I, I say that like I wasn't doing it when I had roommates. It's yeah. like, you're in the shower. It's cleaning. Yeah. It's, I mean, you just, it's, fuck it. Whatever. I think it's acceptable as long as your shower has good drainage. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, if, if it's going to rest somewhere, like you have a big flat shower and mm -hmm. only part of it gets drained, that's mm -hmm. a definite no. Also, but, if you clean your shower a lot. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I got judged because this came up uh, a little bit ago. And they were like, if you pee in the shower, that's gross. And I'm like, what? what? I what? would argue it's the least gross place. Yeah. yeah. My best friends when I was a child, they would come over and it would be good. And, you know, my family was totally the, if it's yellow, let it mellow. Mm -hmm. And there was one day where my very anxious, like, this is maybe when we're like six, she goes into the bathroom and then she comes out just like, distressed and goes up to my mom and is like um uh miss stacy there's there, there's pee in the toilet and i i we don't we flush at home and i, I don't know what to do <laughs> <laughs> my mom was like jess flush flush it <laughs> it's yeah. not that hard <laughs> that's really good i just love the idea of a child almost crying because there is because pee in the toilet pee in the yeah toilet. God um, bless them. Okay, so what should this person do? I um, think that I, they should just ask and be like, "Hey, I, I, I don't agree. know. Uh, I don't know if you're just forgetting, but I noticed that there's a lot of times when I get up for work in the morning, there's still pee, or maybe shit. Uh, who knows? Yeah, uh, it's a very different conversation, though. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I think shit. honestly, that's exactly what I would say. Is you gotta talk about this. There's like, yeah. it, it's uncomfortable. It's not mm -hmm. fun. But just be like, "Hey, could you flush the toilet?" And you frame that however you need to, but yeah. I, I think you you got to say it because it's not, definitely do not do the note. Note makes everyone mad. Yeah. 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 There's do nothing, not do that. nothing is solved by a note. And I, I think it's the, if you can just ask like, Hey, I know I like automatically flush the toilet in the night. Is that too loud for you? Or does that wake you up? Because if you do it, I don't mind about the noise. And if that's why you're not doing it, then just like go for it, flush it. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But it could be that maybe your flushing wakes them up and so maybe what they think they're doing is being more considerate to you i don't know and you will not know until you talk to them about it yep mm -hmm. cool great all right next so i'm going to read one that is uh an excellent question but also a follow-up on advice that we gave in the first episode mm. so it's a little long and i'm going to read it so if you haven't heard the first episode pause this right now spoiler go listen to the entire first episode and then come back cool mm -hmm. 
Hey, uh, this is long, but I think y'all will like it, especially Layton. My name is Sid, and when I was in my junior year of college, I lived with three other people, two guys and one other girl. This is an issue I've wondered, wondered about for over a year, now that I'm graduated, if we were in the wrong or not. So one of the guys was a hardcore type who loved anything occultish or anything that would scare the average southern parents as we're from Oklahoma. So he bought a Halloween skeleton that was about six feet tall, and we decorated the quote-unquote holiday skeleton he lovingly named Gilbert for literally every holiday. When Christmas came around, we decorated him as such, and our other female roommate decorated the house with regular Christmas decor, and a six-foot tree with her own decorations. We started arguing about mid-January about the Christmas decorations once it was time to decorate Gilbert for Valentine's, since she had not taken, any, taken down anything. We offered to help. She said no. I asked if I could at least move smaller things into her boxes. She said maybe. So slowly, we started getting things into boxes and piling decorations up to be put away. She said she was too busy to do it, even though she was home several nights a week and just hold herself up in her room, and February was fast approaching. Eventually, we got really fed up with her since she wouldn't even talk to us when she was home. She stomped around the house constantly and never looked us in the eye and or said more than yup or nope in very dismissive tones when we tried to talk to her. So we decided to move the Christmas tree into her bedroom, which was the largest in the house, and moved Gilbert in place of the tree in our living room to start Valentine's decorations. She got so pissed at us after we had asked her for over a month to deal with the tree, which still had lights, ornaments, the topper, and the skirt. Nothing was put away. And she didn't speak to us until almost the end of February, if I remember correctly. Sorry for Spencer chewing a toy. Everything is fine between us now, but I've always wondered, was I the asshole here? And, update from previous question... I was the one asking about getting along with new co-workers much older than me in your first episode. I've now figured out one of them also loves true crime and the others seem to tolerate my horror-obsessed nonsense and often ask what horror movie I'll be watching over the weekend. I'm pleasantly surprised and grateful y'all helped out in such a big transition in my life. Thanks. Well, that's awesome to hear. Yeah, hell yeah, Sid. I'm so happy to hear that. Concrete well, advice actually worked worked <laughs> out. It's incredible. <laughs> and, and didn't ruin your life like I was afraid <laughs> would yeah. happen with most of our advice. I don't think you're the asshole. If no. you no. and your roommates had been asking them to move the Christmas decorations for, what, like two months? Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, you are not the asshole. You're fully within your rights to move hundred percent. I mostly wanted to read that because I fucking adore the concept of a holiday skeleton. Yeah. I haven't had a Christmas tree on my own ever since I started living not with my parents. Mm-hmm. And I would absolutely put ornaments on a skeleton. I think mm-hmm. that's fucking that's brilliant. That's a great idea. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah. I, I'm totally in uh, on your side on this one. Yeah, not the asshole. Get the tree out of the public space and put it in the person's room. It's their their mm-hmm. deal. Great, cool. Yeah. And last one, Brian, would you like okay, to read? Okay, I would love to. <laughs> Hi, my name is Talia. So I'm a senior in college with three freshman roommates. They're nice people, but their alcohol usage is a real issue in our living arrangement. Granted, drinking, particularly underage, is a rite of passage for many people at university. I'm not someone who enjoys this behavior, and they tend to take it to their limits. They keep alcohol in our room, which breaks rules since none of us are drinking age. They wake me up when they come back at 3 a.m., and one of them is on academic probation because she can't focus on her work. By comparison to them, I'm an absolute homebody goody-goody, but we're on different extremes of the same scale. My problem is, is it my place to do anything? I feel they're absolutely throwing their lives away, but we're not really close, and I feel way too weird about confronting them since technically it's not my business. I don't want to snitch either. What can I do to relieve the tension I feel over these lifestyle issues? Should I have switched rooms at the beginning of this year? I just want to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much, Talia. This one's tough. Yeah. Um, because I don't really think it's it's something that you can say, like, hey, you need to change. Because especially with college, it's like that's when people do that. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, if you feel like someone's about to die, yeah, that's a different conversation but if it's just like hey they like to party a lot which i grant you know can be a slippery Mm -hmm. it can be a fuzzy line sometimes Mm -hmm. yeah but yeah it's it's you know basically saying something is kind of like hey i need to have an intervention yeah here yeah and also Uh, there's there's a level of like and no shade on you um talia uh there's a level of judginess here like you think they're throwing their lives away it's fine for you to feel that way. For the love of God, do not express that to them. Yeah. Because that, yeah, I think the, the real issue here is you have a lifestyle clash, which is difficult. They're coming home and being noisy at 3 a.m. You might fundamentally disagree with what they're doing, and that's fine. Mm-hmm. But the biggest issue here, I'm assuming, is if you're in residential housing and they're drinking underage and they have alcohol in the room, if that was discovered, 
you could potentially be held liable for that. That's exactly right. Um, mm-hmm. So that feels like the real issue here because that is the one that could actually have direct consequences on you. And I know you don't want to snitch, which you probably shouldn't do, but yeah. I don't know. What do you even do about that? I, I do think there's... I, I don't think it's reasonable to say, hey, stop drinking to these mm-hmm. people. Yeah. I do think it's reasonable to say, don't have alcohol in my room. Like, yeah. that's not yes. snitching. That's just saying, and they might be like, fuck you, we're not doing that. Mm. But I think it is completely within your rights for precisely the reason, Leighton, you're saying, that it it, it could really go south if there are three mm. under eight or four or whatever underage people uh, in this room and they discover something. Like, you could get kicked out of school for that. I had... Yeah. I, I forget if I talked about this on a previous episode, I was a high school teacher for mm. one year at a boarding school in Connecticut. And I had an advisee get kicked out because they had, now granted this is high school, but it's still underage mm. uh, because they had uh, uh, like a half a can of beer in their room. And this kid and his roommate got kicked out of the school oh, wow. because they had half a beer. Yeah. And it was like, you know, that that's just the rule. Mm-hmm. and you don't want to fuck with that stuff. It yeah. can really, really go south. Yeah, I would say that the only things that you could or should say to them is, hey, for my sake, like I don't want somebody to come in here and notice that there's alcohol because then I can get in trouble, we can all get in trouble. Or you could say, hey, like if it's impacting your sleep, can you not come home at 3 a.m.? Like belligerent and loud yeah um but other than that i don't think it's reasonable to ask them to change their lifestyle especially because it's college um like that is sort of the time where everybody yeah and you know has their party stage uh, i highly recommend earplugs Mm -hmm. i travel nowhere without earplugs and granted they don't uh you know cut out everything but they can definitely mitigate the noise uh quite a bit uh it's it, it's a it's a lame situation you're in it definitely mm-hmm. feels like you're in lifestyle conflict with these people mm-hmm. uh i think the best you can i mean look if it's really extreme you can get a different roommate i mean yeah. like colleges will account if you're in a totally unsavory living situation it's a normal thing for colleges to say to 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 deal with people in that situation and to find you a new roommate if it's that extreme do it uh anything else it's for one year, one semester, however, probably at this point, it's the rest of the semester. Uh, I think your best bet here, unless it's really just totally unbearable, is to wait out the semester and then get new roommates next year. Mm-hmm. And if it is unbearable and you want to switch, you obviously don't have to tell them because of, that it's because of drinking. Just be like, they kind of keep different hours for me and don't really want to compromise. I mean, you can pull the like, they kind of do like all nighters with homework and uh, you know, you don't have to say that it's because they're partying. Cause I think mm-hmm. that would no, probably definitely lead to them yeah. getting investigated or whatever. Yeah. Snitching but... is a hundred percent not required here. Yes. Yeah. You could also just say, like we don't get along personally like we we just aren't compatible yeah, yeah. um but and, th- and that should be enough for the university to be like okay cool we can put especially if it's yeah. like it's impacting my sleep which is impacting my ability to work mm-hmm. done yeah. yeah and from what i know they're not gonna like investigate really you probably know? Yeah. not i mean it's with a the, roommate change. Th- they might push back a little bit i have no idea probably every university has different mm-hmm. policies on this it's also a hassle for them, so they're probably not going to immediately like jump to do it. Mm-hmm. But I can't imagine it's going to be impossible to yeah. uh, to change roommates. I definitely yeah. had friends in college that did it uh, for situations pretty much like this one. Like my roommate was a party guy and just wanted to drink and bring girls home all the time, and mm-hmm. I couldn't get anything done. Hey, I'm not saying me, but I had friends who were in that situation. Mm-hmm. I was the party guy, just nonstop. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I, I was doing math in the math library. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, get, getting high on algorithms. I'm, well, damn. Yes, I was going to say something more specific, and then I realized it wouldn't land with anybody. So <laughs> great. Say yes. it. Let's say, say algorithms. It. Say it. I was going to say non-abelian groups, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. the reaction that I thought <laughs> yeah. I was going to go to. Uh, but uh, yeah, like, I, I, well, we're we're spinning our wheels at this point. But yeah, yeah. I would say mm-hmm. get out if you have to. You do not need to snitch. If someone's life is feeling threatened but because of alcohol use, that's a totally different story. Yeah. Then you need to have some kind of intervention with them. But it sounds like this is just a lifestyle yeah. clash. And buy some earplugs, talk to them about keeping alcohol mm-hmm. out of the room, and hopefully get new roommates next year. Yeah. Excellent. All right. So, Ethan, mm-hmm. uh, what we do now, mm-hmm. what we're going to do now, is share our pop culture picks with okay. our, our audience. But mm-hmm. we don't really have a firm name for this segment. Yeah, okay. so 
you're going to name it for now. And for I'm going to name time, it. Oh. You to come up with the name. And okay. we promise asterisk. Not really to stick with it. Oh, I'm getting, I'm getting secondary stress watching this. Happen. Uh, okay. okay. So, it's so just it basically people... we share. It's like a, like a show and tell thing. We're just going to talk about something we love. Pop culture pick kind of thing. Show and tell thing. Uh, All right. Pop culture. Ten. Nine. Oh, eight, this, eight, is, this is seven, even worse. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Okay. The segment is called... Um, uh, uh, wh- uh, what's poppin'? No, please. what's poppin'? Please don't. <laughs> I let like it what's poppin'. I like it. I think that's great. That's better than tell and tell, which is what we were calling it before. You know what? It's what's poppin'. What's poppin'? All right, okay, great. I guess it's what's poppin'. Uh, that was very stressful. I think that was a huge success. Okay, it's like we had a cool. real whiplash situation there, and <laughs> it kind of worked out. Look at those improv skills. Yeah. just really coming Got back. Got him. Yes, and yeah. Okay, this is our first ever what's poppin'. Here we go. What's poppin'? What's poppin'? Uh, Layton, do you want to start us off? Oh, whatever's. Um, yes, I think one of my peaches will be me recommending a few things, but the one that I'm going to recommend for what's poppin' is there's a YouTube series that Architectural Digest does where it's them going into celebrities' homes and doing I a house it. tour. It's uh, Do you watch it? Yes. Oh it's my like God. highbrow cribs? Yeah. Yes, totally. But it's either... You can you can tell when somebody did it themselves. Yeah, which is like uh, the Liv Tyler one. She's in a beautiful dress and she's barefoot and she's just <laughs> gently ASMR. We restored this original brownstone and I, I just collect vintage typewriters and I, I love it. And then she takes you into her attic and she's like, "This is where I keep all my memorabilia from Lord of the Rings." And she pulls out the sword and it's like, the, "They gave me care instructions for how to oil the sword." And it's just like, "I I am in love with you." Um, but then they have the ones for people who clearly don't really live there yeah. or who have awful fucking taste. Neil Patrick Harris has the ugliest house really? <laughs> I've ever seen. Yeah. Right? I've seen that one. Yeah. <laughs> and like he and his husband are both wearing plaid, but they do not match. Wait, it, the, the, the plaids don't match with each other or they don't right. match to... They don't, they don't match in, each other. They have so many clashing patterns in their home. Like mm-hmm. the, it's, they have two Christmas trees. Both of the Christmas trees are ugly as sin. Like... Yeah. Fa- it, it, why does everybody have so many portraits of themselves? I don't know. It's so I gross. Don't know. Um, but yeah, it, it's super fun. Do, I, wait, do I have too many portraits of myself in my house for your personal? No, taste? God, no, because you're not Neil Patrick Harris, and like you're <laughs> you ha- you have taste. Like this looks nice. They're not like ugly ass huge wall size portraits. Yeah. But super fun to watch with friends. I was eating a cheese board and watching it with Vernon and Allie. Ooh. Ooh, magical. And we were just yelling like. Why do you have a Banksy and a Mark Ryden painting? You picked the two worst artists to collect. Yeah. Oh, but Banksy is so cool. Oh, it's like the, it's para- really it's, cool. it's the Paramount it's logo. It's so edgy. But it says paranoid. <laughs> also, I'm going to go on a screen against Mark Ryden real quick. He's like one of the people uh, of like the pop surrealism movement. And let me show you his creepy ass gross paintings. Oh, no, I, am, I know Mark Ryden. It's terrible. Yeah, it's I don't. Mark it's disgusting, and I knew right away. I was like, okay, yeah. That's you you right. will have seen these. Okay. It's a very distinct style. Let me it's... find the one of, um, hold on. There we go. Oh. Yeah, right. <laughs> so the image that I just showed Ethan is his signature thing of oh. basically drawing a child with tits, oh. and it, she's squirting breast milk out of her tit into an elephant's mouth. Oh, this is yuck. Fuck yes. Mark Ryden. Yuck. Seriously. Why? It's like, okay. I liked how this turned into something you hate. Yes. But but that's great. You know, you look at an outsider artist like Henry Darger, who, are you guys familiar with Henry Darger? I am not. I am not. Fascinating artist. So he wrote this, wrote and illustrated this epic about children fighting each other. And so he did a lot of like naked children, like killing each other kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But if you read about his life story, he was very schizophrenic, like, this was him processing like he was very religious and then he had a big like you know spiritual crisis and this is about him like dealing with the forces of and representing it with children as a representation of innocence it's still pretty gross and fucking weird but it's not like i'm just gonna sexualize this child for no reason yeah um 
Yeah, that painting that you just showed me made me very uncomfortable. I really did not like yeah. it at all. It so best. I don't trust anybody who pays millions of dollars for one of those because fuck that. Yeah. Anyway, Ar- Architectural Digest. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, cool. they're really fun videos to watch. I want to see this. I, I think I'd love it. Ethan, what, um, what's popping? What's popping? Uh, this is a thing that maybe you've already seen, uh, Layton, but if you haven't, then you'd be really down for it. Oh, yeah. uh, there's a show on Amazon Prime called Hellier. Um, How do you spell that? H e l l i e r, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's about these people who uh, they were like, as like high school kids, they did this like ghost hunting thing, um, and then they got this weird like this super weird email uh, from this person named David saying that he had goblins in his yard Mm -hmm. um and all this weird like paranormal shit was happening and then he actually like got pictures of their footprints and got pictures of the supposed beings and Uh stuff like that but they're as they always are it's like really blurry and this wait this is a series or it's a movie it's a series okay yeah it's like a documentary it's a docuseries and it's really fucking good um and like they don't necessarily find any hard evidence of anything. Of course not. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, if they had, I think we would have heard about yeah. it. Yeah, but it's really well shot, and it's uh, it's a wild ride, and they go down a bunch of different avenues of like of different paranormal stuff, and it's really fucking cool, and I really liked it. Um, Hellier. Could I tell you in depth what it's about? Not really, because I had the flu, and so I was watching it while I was like on a ton of meds in my bed, and also just felt terrible. The beautiful Nyquil delirium. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, but it was it was a really fun time. Uh, definitely recommend for anybody who likes um, like weird cult shit or like paranormal stuff. I it's cool. Will absolutely watch that, and I appreciate that you were like, yeah, you will like this. It's really fucking good. Speaking of being hopped up on medicine, quick sidebar. So, uh, do y'all ever read like Arrowid, the drug website? No, no. I don't it's like know what it is. it's like an old, like old school drug information website that's aimed at like helping people do drugs responsibly. Essentially, how do you, you spell that? E R O W I D. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you can read about like what the chemical compounds are, what the effects are and like, you know, combining substances. And I, I really appreciate them doing it. It's like, listen, we know you're going to do this shit. Here's how you do it. But for each drug, they have like experience logs where people submit, you know, the combinations and oh, like what happened. Yeah. And so I will spend hours reading those because it's fascinating. Huh. But I discovered that people will trip on Benadryl by taking multiple boxes of it. And a hallmark of a Benadryl what? trip, yes. Like, like you down two boxes of Benadryl in one if, go. If not more, you take like, like handfuls of Benadryl. Kind of like they did with like Quaaludes? Sort of, but you know, you take one Benadryl and you're like knocked out, you know? Yeah. But they do that and nobody has ever had like a good trip with it. But the, what terrifies me the How most- How do they not just fall asleep? That's, that shit knocks you out. Great question. Okay. So the hallmark of a Benadryl trip this is every single one. No. Everything is made of spiders. What? Everything is made of spiders. Wait, hold on. Every oh. single person reports that, that everything is made of spiders. This is... <laughs> and that's what? so scary to me. I find this impossible to believe. Everything is made of spiders? Yeah, there's a video on YouTube. Like People will do these recreations of like trying to capture what their trips have been like. And there's one where it's just like, not only is everything made of spiders, you just see spiders overlaid on everything. What the fuck? <laughs> it's terrible. It's like, why would you do it? So I Go have, do a normal drug. <laughs> I have a an incredibly severe peanut allergy. And uh, right. whenever right. I have an allergy attack, I have to take Benadryl. And then I use my pens or whatever um, which you brought on stage during the live show that's right that's yeah. right i have them on me right now i always got them um but so the first time i ever had an allergy attack um i went home and i like started getting all these hives and stuff and so i took four benadryl mm-hmm. and then in the ambulance they gave me four more Benadryl. Oh, my God. Oh, and no. then at the hospital, they <laughs> no. gave me four more Benadryl. So how many spiders did you see? So I didn't, I don't remember <laughs> seeing any spiders, but I had 12 Benadryl in the course of like a, maybe 40 Jesus minutes. Jesus Christ, Ethan. Yeah. Um, no, and so um, every time I have an allergy attack, which it's only happened three times when I've actually like gone into shock, but there have been times where I've like had some scares. 
So there was one time where I had to work a 16 hour shift at work and my shift started with me getting random hives. So I took four Benadryl and then worked a 16 hour shift. Oh my shift dude, in a how restaurant. did you survive? It was so bad. It was so, so bad. Um, but yeah, I did experience a little bit of like weird trippiness with that, there, with there, like trying to fight to stay awake. Yeah. Um, it, it feels very like sleep paralysis adjacent. And yeah. another thing that gets reported is you see the hat man, which is the, the funniest phenomenon to me. So there's sh- there's shadow people that you see on mm. a lot of drugs like that. But then there's the hat man, which is another thing that like, this is a d- bunch of different drugs. You see a man who's tall and he has a hat on. <laughs> Hat man is such a what? the idea of you just like tripping balls and then and you just the guy with the hat. You just see a fucking guy with a hat on and it's a fedora. It's oh, always a fedora. In my mind, it was one of those big like floppy Rasta hats. Oh, in my mind, it was like a bowler cap or like one of those little helicopter propeller caps or the one where you put sodas on the side and you drink. <laughs> so you see man. spiders and then Hat Man walks up and he's like into his fedora. I and the squirrel nut <laughs> zippers are playing yeah. in the background. Is this a new trend of people doing Benadryl recreationally? No, it's not a tr- That's what's really fun about Arrowhead is like most of the accounts were posted in like 2002, 1999. Mm. So it's it's old school stuff and they categorize wow. it by like really great trips, awful trips, life-ruining trips where you have permanent brain damage. Like yeah, there was one pass on those. Yeah, there was one guy yeah, who did no like f- a crazy amount of Benadryl and then he just had brain damage for the rest of his life. And he cool. posted about it? Yeah. Fuck. I mean, that's that's part of what Arrowhead is for, is for people to write about, like, my son did this and died, so here's what wow. happened, and if you want oh to do God. this drug, you should be aware. So I highly recommend Arrowhead for anybody to read, because it's interesting, but also if you are a psychonaut or adjacent, you know, it's good for How you, you to be How do you spell it again? E-R-O-W-I-D dot org. I am terrified of drugs. I have never done anything other than smoke pot, mm-hmm. and yeah. I did that four times, and it scared the shit out of me, and I hated it. And now I just, I you just got to find the right strain, dude. Just, you know what? <laughs> I've thought about like I, I've thought about it's so easy to get now. Of course, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, the most pot I ever smoked was when I was a the one year I taught high school in a boarding school. <laughs> uh, by the most, I mean the three out of four times I did it were yeah. during that year. Uh, and I just hated everything about it, and I will not touch drugs. I just I'm I'm too scared about it. You know, and I, nothing against anyone who loves them. Mm-hmm. I can't do it. It frightens me. We should do mini sewed, uh, bake bake bacon baked night. Whatever we smoke, smoke weed. <laughs> baked it, it would be night. legitimately the first time in twenty years wow. I've been high. Yeah, that would be. Get Audrey in here. <laughs> maybe, maybe not a good idea then. Uh, That's funny. Uh, all right. So I guess it's my turn. Brian. It's your turn. What's poppin'? Uh, I like that. You know, that's what we should do. I really so like Brian, it. Brian, what's poppin'? Layton, what's it? Great. We're doing this from now on. Ethan, you just saved the podcast. Congratulations. Here, welcome, shake my guys. hand. Shake my hand. You're there welcome. you go. Yeah, you're um, welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, what's poppin'? This is uh, an album I was just listening to this week. It's an old album from 2011. It's by the uh, Canadian hardcore band Fucked Up. It's called <laughs> David Comes to Life. Ooh. And it is fucking awesome. It is, it's super, like every track is like a thousand guitars on it, all distorted out, you know, to, to just like a crazy levels, but it's very melodic. It's a, it's a concept album that takes place. It's like in the seventies, eighties, I think England, uh, about it's, it, it's, the story is kind of, uh, all over the place and there's meta narrative going on at some point, David, the lead character, like confronts the narrator of the story They actually don't really understand what the story of the album is but it's irrelevant because the music is amazing. It's the kind of thing that I think is really hard to do, which is super hardcore, but very, very melodic. Ooh. And uh, the the main singer, uh, what's his name? Damien Albarn, something like that, uh, has this very kind of raspy, hardcore vo- voice. But it's also, like with like Tom Waits, you can get the melody in there. Yeah. And then there's a, a woman whose name I forget, uh, who's also singing. There's these two characters, David and Veronica, uh, it is, it's the, the pace of every song is just that, you know, pretty, uh, pretty fast, hardcore kind of, yeah. kind of tempo. It's a beautiful, beautiful album and is, it's something that I, I have revisited, uh, like time and time again over the years. And every time I listen to it, I just love it more. So it's, I'm not normally like a huge hardcore punk guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I like the stuff I like in, in that genre, but it's not something I know a lot about. 
uh, this album I found uh, I found out about. I think uh, Tom Sharpling on the Best Show had knows these guys somehow and recommended it or played a track or something like that. And I just thought it was incredible. Yeah. So uh, it's something actually when Dan and I are signing CDs together, there there isn't too much music that we both love at the same time. There's a lot wow. of music that one person loves and the other likes. Mm-hmm. I won't say tolerates, but for a lot of prog is like like that. Dan loves prog rock. Yeah, mm-hmm. I like a lot of it, but I'm not like super prog. This mm-hmm. album is one of the ones that we both agree on and both love. Yeah, that's and wonderful. it's also a good tempo for signing huh. CDs. What's what's this called again? Frampton comes alive. <laughs> 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 yes, Fucked Up's album, Frampton Comes Alive. Uh, so yeah, 2011 album by Fucked Up, David Comes to Life. It's absolutely, it, it's a beautiful, astonishing Frampton album. Comes alive. <laughs> I think we got a Frampton Comes Alive joke in Dream Daddy that was like, I only own one record and it's Frampton Comes Alive. <laughs> anyway, uh, do we want to move into our final segment? Peaches and Lemons, yeah. Peaches, Peaches and Lemons. And the as, lemons are bad, right? A, as always, lemons are bad. I'm going to play the brand new theme song. Right here. So, Ethan, what did you think of that theme song? Wow. Wow. Right. You know, the ups. What was your favorite the part? The downs. Tell me the, your favorite part. The, the drum. The, the drum, drum solo. Oh, the drum solo. In it. That happens <laughs> mm-hmm. in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, was probably my favorite part. You know, with, with the toms and uh, there mm-hmm. was a little uh, a hint of hi-hat. Yeah, I can hear that. The, yeah. the a upper, high hint. Yeah. The upper uh, register mm-hmm. was phenomenal. You know. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, and the low end was good. <laughs> too. That's, that's all I was looking for. Yeah, you're welcome. Peaches and lemons. So we do, did you oh, did you explain the segment? I mean, we kind of talked about it before. For the uninitiated, my family does this sweet thing at dinner um, where they every go, dinner. I mean, this is okay. So this is my aunt and uncle with their um, with my nieces. They go around the table and each one shares three peaches and a lemon. The three peaches are good things that they were grateful for, or that were exciting, whatever. The lemon is like a thing that was kind of a bummer. And you start with the lemon and you end with the peaches. So it's like, you know, a gratitude exercise. And so we do that on this podcast. As you may recall from the live show, we did the emotional check in. And so this is a little uh, bit yes. more fenced in version of that. Mm-hmm. An homage okay. to the uh, emotional check in. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I can go first. Okay. Uh, this week, uh, my lemon is there's a Mexican restaurant mm-hmm. right near where we live that I go to approximately once every six months, thinking it can't possibly as be as bad this time <laughs> as it was six months ago, and it is very convenient to my house, uh-huh. and it's like it's right there, mm-hmm. and sometimes. Sometimes it's just the only thing that I can get in a given time period. So I went there today for lunch. And you know what? While not as bad as the last time, which was objectively awful, it still sucks. Yeah. And I'm so mad at myself for not trusting past Brian (laughs) to be like, you know what, future Brian, you're still not going to like it. It's not. Some people love this place. What about it is so bad? It's just it's 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 bland. It's mm-hmm. overpriced. It's there's something about the the sauce they the the, the way they make their uh, their meat or they like yeah. It's just it's uh, again I, I sort of hesitate to say bad, even though I did just say objectively mm-hmm. bad. I just really really don't like it. And I, every six months I go back thinking I will, and I never do. So that's my lemon. That's is, such a bummer. Yeah, I wish my convenient restaurants to my house were better. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also recognize that I'm in a position of privilege to have convenient restaurants to my house. So. But, you know, save this audio clip for the future. Yeah, you know? that's so right. Then I can you play can, it to myself. You can play it back to yourself. Yeah. And when six months from now, you're like, oh, maybe I'll go back to that place. Just be like, no. Yeah. No. No, play don't do it. Audio Trust audio yourself. Uh, Peaches, I spent the last week in Colorado. With Ooh. some close friends, and I uh, have one friend who is recuperating from some stuff and mm-hmm. wanted to see him. And we went up into the mountains, into Netherland, Colorado, and it was like snowing and cold, and it was just, uh, just the you know the middle of the Rockies, just beautiful. And got some, got to spend some time with some people who are really special to me, uh, and just had a lovely like old friends kind of gathering. I've never been so, to Colorado. It's awesome. It seems like a uh, beautiful I've, place. I've been to the haunted airport. 
Which is the haunted airport? Did Denver? you guys know the conspiracy theories about the Denver Oh, yeah, airport? yeah, yeah, yeah. I know there's a bunch. Is haunted one of them? I mean, not haunted. I thought there was supposed uh, to be like But a, it's like a government, supposedly, like, underground. I don't actually Yeah, like, know people them, live but. under the, there's a secret society or something. Yeah, that a real the... Jordan Peele's us kind of situation. <laughs> I don't know. Huh. Uh, the I did fly through the Denver airport. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't like that airport. I don't like. I don't like Nor any I. airport where there's one big security that everybody has to go through, and then you yeah. get on the tram. Atlanta's like this too. Mm-hmm. It's fucking lame. Fuck the Atlanta airport. Yeah, fuck I the think, Atlanta airport hard. I think uh, Bob Hope Hop, Hollywood Airport, whatever it's called, the, Burbank. The, the Burbank Airport is the best airport. Oh my god, because yes. you step into the 70s. Yeah. yeah, and there's no one there. There's no one there. It takes yeah. two seconds. Yep, and it's named after Bob Hope. Mm-hmm. And it's not LAX. I will pay the extra money to go to the I, Bob Hope. Airport. I absolutely it's will. Peach number two. Peach number two. Rachel is in a children's play. I mentioned mm-hmm. this on a previous episode, and we saw opening day yesterday. It's Yay. the Velveteen Aww. Rabbit here in LA. Uh, they have four more Sundays, and it's the cutest fucking thing. Aww. Audrey, uh, I watched the whole play with a five-year-old on my lap, my own five-year-old, and every time <laughs> Rachel was on stage, Audrey just went, Mommy. <laughs> <laughs> Just like forlornly? <laughs> yeah, because she was upset that Rachel was inaccessible to her but while she, she was on stage, her. but she was right there in a big bunny costume. It was really, really fucking cute. And I thought she was going to be like losing, that uh, Audrey was going to be like, ah, you know, cracking up, having a great time. Yeah. She was more sad than that after the play. I said, Audrey, did you like that? And she goes, I half liked it and I half didn't like it. And I said, what, what was the half didn't like it? Well, it made me sad. Oh, so you're upset because it made you, not that you didn't like it, but that you, you don't like being sad. Yeah. Yeah, because it, the story of the Velveteen Rabbit is- It's fucked up. It's real fucked up. They mitigate the fucked upness a little bit, but not too much. There's the, no threat of being burned alive? There's a, uh, oh. No, there absolutely is. Uh, <laughs> they're, they're, the best line of the play is uh, <laughs> a character that you've never seen before, which is the doctor, enters, examines the kid, and then turns away and goes to the audience- it's Scarlet Fever. <laughs> <laughs> a bunch of kids who have no idea what Scarlet Fever is. Of course. Pretty fucking great. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and let's see. Uh, third Peach. Third Peach is that uh, I recently completed my first ever large Lego set, which was in the architecture series, the Empire State Building. Ooh. Uh, did yeah. you do that with uh, Audrey and Meowch? I did do it with Audrey and Meowch, and it was Meowch's idea to have a Lego day with Audrey. Of course it Because was. he's the sweetest guy in the entire world. And we went to get hot dogs for lunch, and we did Legos, and we got ice cream with me and Audrey and Rachel and Meowch, and uh, she did a little Star Wars thing. I think it was a land speeder. Or maybe that was Meowch. I can't remember. And it was really, really fun. But I have not put together a legit oh, yeah. Lego set uh, in... I mean, since I was a kid. Yeah, I haven't either. And it was really, the Empire State Building was, it it was a really fun one. It was like, I think like a 1,500 pieces or something like that. Yeah. Did it in, I don't know, three hours and we just sat and listened to smooth jazz and did Legos. That sounds so much fun. Do y'all, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no. Do do y'all ever do Gundams? Sometimes. It's really fun. I love Gundams so much. It's never done Really? Awesome. I mean, yeah. it's like Legos, but a little bit more involved because you get yeah. the plastic sheets yeah, and you yeah, sand yeah, them yeah. down. Mm-hmm. I got a Dremel for circuit bending Ooh. stuff, and like that really amps it up when you're trying to get stuff like... Anyway, we do Nights with Meowch where we'll watch, you know, we'll throw on the Friday the 13th movies and or, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street and just the, the Meowch does Gundams, or no, Meowch does Legos, Star, huge ass oh, Star yeah. Wars well, He Legos. did the Falcon. Yeah. He did That's that. what I was just about to say. He, he did, did the big Batmobile, yeah. and he has displays all over the apartment. That's so awesome. you walk in, and it's just Legos, but in, we'll do Gundams. Well, and, or, you know, he shares an apartment with Hav Hogan, and I yeah. think it's driving Hav Hogan a little nuts. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks great. Yes. So awesome. Yeah, Mika, my girlfriend, wants to get the Falcon. It's it, pretty. It's, it's pretty so rare. I haven't cool. seen his. I've seen some uh, one that's like someone else. Seventy four hundred pieces. It's or fucking crazy. I think it took him like twenty hours to do or something yeah. like that. It's crazy. Insane. As Miach says, the Falcon. Oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh Layton. Um my lemon is that yesterday I received a letter from my grandmother. Are you gonna read this? A physical letter or a text? A phys- well, I thought you were leaning to pull it out of your pocket. No, my phone's over there, so I won't be able to do the direct quote, but my grandmother writes these longhand cursive six page like minimum 
letters on legal pads that are, I, I'm like a real fast reader and these are like, you have to stop and like really read it. But she's notorious in my family for doing them because they are the most passive aggressive things I've ever seen mm -hmm. in my life. And my hope is she does not listen to this, but I also kind of don't care. Um, anyway, very religious. She's more of a Joe Rogan fan, I think. When it comes to <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, <clears throat> all Southern Baptists love Joe Rogan. Uh, so she wrote me this letter that uh, they're always so judgy. But she went on this screed about how um, my, and she literally put this in quotes, how my mental illness is like because the devil has a target on my back. And that <clears throat> this is the direct quote. I'm concerned about your binging on Halloween horror films. That scares me because it tells me that you do not take the evils of this world seriously, end quote. And then it was a bunch of Bible passages and then talking about how that's allowing the roaring demon of the devil to come into my brain through that sinful content. Mm -hmm. oh. um, so that was a big time lemon and I've been very angry about it. It's like, man, <laughs> if you so wanted great. hardline atheist my whole life, and I know that she probably knows, but it's like the way to get a child into religion isn't yeah. by foie gras goose force feeding it down your throat your in child, entire childhood and then constantly lecturing you as an adult about how your lifestyle is sinful. Yeah. Like, sorry, I'm attracted to women and have tattoos and love horror movies. It, it ain't going anywhere. Yeah. That's fundamentally who I am. One Peach is that it's been a really good uh, week for new music releases. We got two Stroke singles. We got a Glass Animal single. We got a new um, Ray Ami sing uh, a single who super slept on R-E-I-A-M-I, -I, like really good, like sound cloudy, bedroom poppy, but rappy, like so fucking good. Um, second Peach, oh, over the weekend I had a really nice hangout, as mentioned, with um, some good friends where it was Ash, Allie, and Vernon. Ash brought her beautiful dog Camilla over, um, and it was fun to watch her uh, kind of get used to playing with maybe. They wouldn't really play. They were just kind of sniffing each other. But, you know, we made, like, a really extravagant cheese board, and then we had some salami and prosciutto and these little, like, sausages that were, like, fancy Slim Jims. We had an everything bagel-style goat cheese. We were just sitting around on my balcony, you know, hanging out, eating cheese. And I feel like was... most of the food I hear you discuss is eaten off a board. Oh, yeah. O only, only boards. I mean, a cheese board is my favorite thing in the world. It's the best. Because um, it's just such an easy... And, you know, last night I had my paper plate cheese board, <laughs> which is just like <laughs> leftover cheese and pickles um, that I'm eating in front of my fridge. Third peach is... I think I'm watching you pet it. <laughs> yeah, you know what? You, you keep suggesting peaches for me, and you're always right. I, well, I, 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 it's really not my place to do so. I've been... Uh, Ethan and I, and I have been sitting here petting Spencer for the mm -hmm. majority of this podcast, and it's deeply soothing. So that's my third peach. Is it off-putting that I keep suggesting peaches? How dare you know it's great, great because guy. I can't think of a third <laughs> thing. I'm sure I had something. I feel it tremendously uh, presumptuous. How Spencer... fucking dare you suggest okay. things that I could be happy about? <laughs> Spencer is a... Uh, he's a good... He's a good little peach. He there is. was a... Uh, there was a time where I was having a very rough go of it. A rough go of it? Haha. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I was on my bed, and I was having a little bit of a cry, and Spencer came over, and he just laid across my chest. Oh. And it was what? so... It was the cutest thing ever. Oh, and he just, like, guy. laid across my chest and just, like, put his head down. It was so The cute. fact that dogs know when you're upset and know to comfort you is, like... Yeah the most beautiful experience yeah. in the world. Except for my idiot monster of a dog who <laughs> has, does not respond to my emotional level whatsoever. <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, all right. Lemons and peaches. My lemon was last week. I was super, super sick. Oh, no. Um, I don't know what I had. It was like flu-ish. Um, I don't really ever get sick that much, but when I get sick, I get really, really sick. Um, and so that was my, hopefully my sickness for the year. It just sucked. That's I just don't like not being able to do anything. Um, it's kind of nice in a way, just like sitting in bed all day. But it, when you feel like fucking garbage, it's not oh, fun. You can't get up. Yeah. It's yeah. Just, it's the worst. And my whole body just hurt so bad. And I was so achy and like, I was so hot and so cold at the same time. It was awful. Just not fun. Just not fun. Um, but you're better now. I am better now. Good. Yeah, I am. Um, peaches, peaches. Uh, my mom 
came to LA for a little business trip Yay. thing. Aww. Uh, and so she was at my, my place for a couple of days. Um, and this was right after I was done being sick and I was just home for her birthday right. uh, at the beginning of the month. And so I was like, Hey, like I really need to catch up on work stuff. Like I'm really, really behind. And, uh, and so she was really cool about it. And so I was out filming one of the days that she was, she was here. And so I was out filming like all day and I didn't even ask her to, but she did all, she like cleaned my whole apartment and did all of my laundry what? for me. Oh my gosh. And it was really, oh, really sweetie. sweet. Because like, like I didn't the ultimate have mom move. Yeah, and like I had like all of my clothes were dirty because I had just gotten home, and so I had like I hadn't put away like my suitcase and stuff, and it was still sprawled on my floor because I immediately got sick, and so that was all there, and then I was just sick anyway, so I just like didn't have any energy to do laundry, and so she did all of my laundry, and like it was really nice, and I got home really and she great. had done all this stuff, and I was like, oh mom, thanks. <laughs> Um, my other peach, my other peach, how many peaches do we have? Three need peaches. two more. I need two more peaches. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, geez. My favorite part about this segment is the undue burden it places on all of our guests. <laughs> but I think that's part of it. Cause like, I, I think people don't practice gratitude enough. I completely and, agree. And, and having to reach for it is yeah. important. Yes. I totally agree. Um, so you better come up with some shit real yes. quick, Ethan. And come make it real some, fucking happy. Come up with some good shit. Um, last night, uh, I went out with a couple of friends mm. and, and got a little drunk, oh. uh, which I don't do super often. What did you drink? Uh, what's, your, just, what's your drink, Ethan? Just beers. Uh, my like go-to drink, there's a really great bar that's near my house, and it actually shut down for a little bit because I think... Uh, the reasons why I like it are it's small and not a lot of people go there, so mm-hmm. it's really quiet. I think that not enough people went there because it shut down for a little bit yeah. and then new people bought it out. Um, but it's really great, and like they have a pool table there, and there's very few people there, and the oh, service nice. is awesome. That sounds awesome. Um, yeah. yeah, they have a, they have a drink there called penicillin. I don't <gasps> know if that's a normal Penicillin drink. is my favorite it's drink. It's so good. Wow. It's so, so good. Layton's face just lit up. Yeah. What, well, what because is... you're describing like the bar that I go to in my neighborhood, the only one is exactly the same. It's yeah. small, it's dark, and it's the only one within walking distance that has a penicillin. What is penicillin? It's scotch, lemon, and ginger. Sometimes like so, honey in there, and they so good. the place I go to puts a little dried like ginger in there. That's like I love straight up scotch, but it's mm. just the perfect like. It's so refreshing and delicious, and it's smoky. That that's crazy. I was not expecting you to say that because I bring up penicillin wow. to people and they don't know what I'm talking right. about. Yeah, so I I went out last night and got a little drunk. I don't do that a lot, um. So that was that was really fun. Just had a a nice relaxing night with some friends. Had some drinks. Uh, got a little drunk. Nice. It's a great time. That's yeah, awesome. and that's the best. Coming home to Spencer and then cuddling with Spencer uh, while you're drunk. Oh, it's the amazing. best thing. When I was so roughly your guys' age, 23, mm. let's say, my tr- <laughs> my drink was a Midori Sour. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and That's funny. It, yeah, it, it was all I drank, and it's, do you know what Midori? Uh, is it similar to an Amaretto Sour? No. Uh, Midori is, I believe, a Japanese melon liqueur. It oh. is bright green. Oh, hell and you yeah. then you mix it with sweet and sour. Midori <sighs> by itself is undrinkable, but cut with sour. Now I haven't had one of these for a long time, but uh, a friend of mine who was just a few years older and uh, a little bit more experienced with drinking than I suggested mm-hmm. it, and I really loved it. And got made fun of ruthlessly oh, of for course. drinking this mm. constantly. Yeah. Hey, anybody who gives you shit for your alcoholic beverage of choice can get fucked. <laughs> like, if it's what you like to drink, yeah. cool. Whiskey isn't inherently cooler than other things, even though it makes you feel cool. But if you make fun of mm-hmm. somebody for, I don't know, liking white Zinfandel, that's lame. No, that don't. Was- my mom loved a good white Zinfandel. No, my oh. mom loved a bad white Zinfandel. Oh, when I first started <laughs> drinking, it was like, and this is like underage drinking, like white Zinfandel. Franzia in a box. P- pink Moscato. Oh, yeah. We, we got Moscato Franzia, and we were like, this tastes like really fucked up, and not just in the fucked up way that Franzia tastes. And then we opened it up, and it was a year expired and full of mildew. Oh, oh. my God. And I had clocked that. I was like, does Jesus this taste Christ. like mildew to you guys? And they're like, no. I did uh. not underage drink. No, 
Nope. I because did a little bit. I'm terrified of having fun. And <laughs> I, it's the same reason I yeah. didn't, I don't take drugs. I just like, I yeah. cannot let myself get completely obliterated. You won't, you won't release the control. Yes. Yeah. N- now I have no problem drinking and I mean, I don't get drunk that often, but <laughs> I will occasionally. Uh, but no, as a, as a, uh, like a high schooler, I was just terrified of the idea yeah. of getting drunk. I mean, I wasn't like high school. I was like freshman year of college, like being 18, 19. And yeah. I feel like I got my heavy drinking out of the way then. Not like I was a huge partier, but mm-hmm. you know, just not knowing my limits. And now I just like, I barely drink. I'll have a little bit of whiskey every once in a while. And, yeah. Yeah. Or I'll have a, you know, get a maker's mark and Coke at a bar. I hate beer. My dad, uh, when I was 19 had a birthday party. And so this was during my quote unquote gap year, which I'm still on my gap year. <laughs> uh, but uh, a bunch of my friends, because I worked in a, in a restaurant at the time, and so a bunch of my friends actually showed up to this birthday party that he was having. And we were all really drunk. And then they were like, hey, Mark, who's my dad's name? Um, he, they were like, you should shotgun a beer. And he was Ooh. like, I'll shotgun a beer if Ethan will shotgun what? a beer with me. And so ah. we shotgunned. I'm, I've never shotgunned a beer. Nor I. It's so Sounds it was especially bad this time because it was an IPA, which <sighs> you really shouldn't shotgun an IPA. Not you the smoothest shotgun, thing in the world. Yeah, you yeah. should shotgun like a Bud Light. Um, and so we shotgunned these two beers, and I immediately like threw up everywhere. <laughs> and I was, I, we were all outside in his backyard. And I was like on my hands and knees throwing up. Wait, how old are you again at this point? Like 19. 19. Yeah. And was this your first drink? No. Oh, okay. um, and so when I turned 18, my dad was cool with me drinking like every every now and again. And he was like, I know that you're probably going to drink. Just do it safely. And he was he was awesome. really cool about it. And That's he was great. like, he was like, I'm fine with you drinking as long as you don't ever drive anywhere. If you ever get drunk and you need me to pick you up, I will pick you up anytime, any place. I won't get mad at you. So reasonable. He was really awesome about it. Um, and I never really drank either. It was like a few times. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah and I so love that. Yeah. No, it was great. Yeah. Um, that, that's the real, like, truly good parent move. Of, yeah. Of yeah. The non judgmental, like, I know you're going to do it, be safe about yeah, it, yep. and I'm willing to help you without judgment. Because, like, when you create the environment of mm-hmm. this, like, punitive, I'm going to freak out, that's when kids start hiding stuff. Yeah, because then it, it, I feel like inherently, like, kids also want to be troublemakers sometimes. Yeah, yes. they want to be rebellious. I yeah. mean, getting that letter from my grandma made me be like, I am going to go do <laughs> fucked up shit. <laughs> I love the devil. <laughs> I think my parents never talked to me about drinking or having sex yeah. when I was a teenager because they knew I was in no danger of doing either. <laughs> my dad, many, my dad many years. bought me condoms with my first girlfriend. I was 17 yeah. and he, he didn't say anything about it. He just bought me condoms and put them on my dresser. Um, and he never, he never brought it up. Your it dad, like, wait, hey. does your dad rule? It yeah, like no, your dad my dad's awesome. rules. Good yeah. guy, dad. No, he's a, he's a good boy. Yeah. So I was throwing up and he got down and put his hand on my shoulder and he, he just whispered in my ear, this is what it would be like if you went to college. <laughs> 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 and then he walked away. It was great. All right. Yeah. You have one, you owe us one more peach. One more peach. Uh, one more peach. One yeah. more peach. Uh, the other day for... Uh, Unis Honest, which is the the group channel that I have, my friend Mark, um, we went and did basically a cooking class. There's this dude that does a thing on Airbnb because Airbnb has Airbnb experiences. Oh, yes, they do. Not just stays, also experiences. Experiences. And so he was like, his whole thing is he's like this crazy chef guy. And so he's like, tell me your favorite movie. And I will craft a menu around that movie. No. What? Yes. And then he's like, and then you come in and we make the meal together. And then we sit down and we watch the movie. And I serve you the meal. Like, How do I do this? Because I, I, cool. I can give you the, the link to his thing. Um, yeah. So it was awesome. What was um, the movie? Or you can't say we it. Did, because... We did How the Grinch Stole Christmas. <laughs> Wait, the Ron Howard one? The the one with... Uh, Jim Carrey. With Jim Carrey in it, yeah. It was awesome. It was really fun. Dude, I fucking love that movie. It was Again, the really second time. The I'll second time I this. brought this up, it's so batshit. It's so funny. It's delightfully batshit because yeah. it's like every like all these good comedy people just mm-hmm. kind of going ham in an inappropriate way for a children's movie. It's great. Um, yeah, so he crafted this menu around How the Grinch Stole Christmas, and we made some fucking bomb-ass food. And like, I don't really cook a lot. 
Um, and like I can cook a couple of things, but like I, my cooking skills are pretty, pretty average, I guess. Mm -hmm. But it was like, whoa, we made a fucking sweet meal. And like he didn't, the chef didn't do anything. He just provided us the materials and showed oh, us how to oh, do I it. Wow. Yeah. Cool. And so it was like, oh, I made some really, really good food. It was really fun. Wow. Did you awesome. have roast beast? Yes. So okay, we made, good. we made a beef Wellington for the roast you made a beast. beef Wellington. Yeah, that's fuck? not easy. Yeah, it was fucking awesome. I it love was beef Wellington. Really, really cool. I really I'd never it. had it before. It's pretty fucking great, right? Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, we made a beef Wellington, and then we made a uh, Christmas dinner leftover wontons. So okay. he took like a bunch of stuff that would be in a Christmas dinner, and then it was like turkey and like cream cheese and cranberry sauce and like mm. some other shit. And we mix it all up and then put them into wontons. And like I folded my own wontons and stuff, which was fun. And then were those like fried or steamed? Those were fried. And then we made some egg rolls and then we made a some like hash thing. Mm, The Um, who who hash. The who hash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it was awesome. That sounds but amazing. that was that was really fun. It was like a really fun thing to do. And then it was also like, I can cook. I just need to figure it out. You just need to be very explicitly told what yeah. to do. And it must exactly. be themed around how the Grinch stole Christmas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's uh, that's how I learned to, to cook. I mean, I'm yeah. not like great at it, but I just mm-hmm. was like following instructions from actually, in this case, Mark Bittman cookbooks mm-hmm. until mm-hmm. I kind of got a, enough of a vibe for it to be able to do it myself. Yeah. So. Yeah, it was very fun. Learn uh, to cook. It's amazing. It's my favorite. It's really fun. Your twenties are a great time to do that too. It's great. Yeah. Oh, and it's so impressive. Like when if you, you have you, someone over, ooh, like I make a mean risotto, and that's like you pour some wine. You, you it's a long term thing. No. You make some roasted garlic. Ooh, mm-hmm. do a thing. I did this when I was in my mid twenties, where it was like a dinner club where we would alternate different people's houses. So it was ooh. like six of us, and uh, some were actually a little older than me at the time. I was probably the youngest. So some people were in their thirties and married and stuff. And, you know, you would go to one person's house, they would cook the meal, and then it would just rotate around. Mm. And it was such a great experience. Most of the stuff I made didn't work and tasted awful, but yeah. it was a learning experience and a way to yeah, hang out with fun. friends. And with enough alcohol, everyone was fine. Yeah. Get a couple totally. bottles it's of wine. Food. Also, it's cooking with friends is such a magical experience. You get your yeah. sous chef going, you chop, and then you can learn stuff. But, like, yep. honestly, basic rule – you get your onions, garlic, butter in a pan. Pretty much whatever you do with it, as long as you don't burn it, is going to be bomb as fuck. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right when uh, when we were living in London for my birthday one year, Rachel signed me up for a knife skills class. Ooh. Uh, cooking thing, and it was it like literally changed how I cook. Yeah, just learning how to properly use mm-hmm. a knife to chop to uh, to like uh, what do you call it? Dissect to butcher. That's what I'm looking for. Ah. A chicken. It you know I'd learned I'd been holding a knife wrong my entire life. You don't just hold the handle. Yeah, no, you yeah. Right yeah, you put, I didn't know right that. So yeah, and totally you gotta hold everything. stuff. With, with this mm-hmm. with aud- with audio medium. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. We're, mime, we're miming, chopping off our hands. Yeah. Thank you so much for for being here Thank with you guys us for today. This was a lot me. of fun. Yeah, uh, we, so as, much fun. As we've said many times, we just think you're you're the best. Stop. Yeah, and God, I, uh, I love everything you do. You're just a naturally awesome and wonderful Thanks. and funny person. And I can't wait to see the the How the Grinch Stole Christmas episode of Santa Santa's. Yeah, that was really really fun. That was super fun. I'll uh, I'll let you guys know where that's at. If you're in, in the LA area, just look up the Airbnb experience thing, and you could probably find it. Cool. Um, um, and is there anything else you'd like to plug? Where can we oh, find that's you? That's a good question. Um, yes. Yeah, you can media. find me on the internet. Uh, crank gameplay is pretty much everywhere. Um, and then I do that that the second Ooh. channel, Unis Unis Anus, Anus. where we uh, can just you spell do that? It means you, one anus. Yeah, one anus. O n e a n u s. U n u s a n n u s. It's only existing for a year. And wait, how many months in are we now? Three, four. We are twenty five percent of the way done. Okay. Wow. Um, so there is two hundred and sixty three days left. Fuck. Yeah. Wow. I love that you you were ready to go on that. Well, well it's because every video starts with a timer. Ay. Well, you know what? You also made it extra hard for yourselves because it's a leap year. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you have one day more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bold. That's fun. Well, fun thank time. you so much for joining us today. And thank you yeah. for bringing Spencer yes. um, to the listeners. Thank you for tuning in for another <laughs> episode of this bullshit. And we appreciate all the feedback that we've gotten so far. The tweets, the emails means a lot to us that people are enjoying us. 
Um, and uh, hope you can focus on the peaches in your life right now. Uh, the lemons, they'll be there, but you know, the peaches outweigh the lemons. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's great. The peaches that way. Is that too cheesy? It. No, it's perfect. Okay. Oh, great. Bye. Great. Love you all. Bye. Leighton Night is produced by Brian Wecht and Leighton Gray. Our next live show is at the Lodge Room in Los Angeles on March 23rd. You can buy tickets at LeightonNight.com, www.leighton.com. I do know how to spell my own name. Please follow us on Twitter at Leighton Night on Instagram at Leighton underscore night, and you can email us at LeightonKnight at gmail.com.